We're ambushing mages and trapping warriors. That's right, it's Keep the Heroes Out from Brew Games. In this cooperative dungeon defender, one to six players take on the role of monsters, all working together to stop those greedy heroes from plundering all their treasure. Over a series of turns, players will acquire loot, fight heroes, and lay traps. If they manage to survive both waves of heroes without losing their most valuable treasure, the monsters prevail and win the game. Setup begins with dungeon building. Choose one of the scenarios from the dungeon book and place dungeon rooms based on the illustration shown. We've chosen the bookworm today, so we'll arrange the tiles like so. Shuffle the treasure tokens face down, number side up, and place tokens in the dungeon based on the scenario instructions. Next, shuffle the beast, potion, equipment, and scroll cards together to form the loot deck. Set it face down near the dungeon, then draw and reveal five cards nearby. Shuffle the Warrior, Rogue, Mage, and Archer cards, along with any scenario cards listed in your specific scenario, and shuffle them together to form the Guild deck. Place that face down nearby. Then create a supply of tokens and set them within reach. Next, it's time for Clan Selection. Beginning with the youngest player and proceeding clockwise, each player chooses a clan and takes the matching clan card, tactic cards, and monsters. They shuffle their tactic cards together into a face-down tactic deck, then draw five cards to form their starting personal hand. The player who has the least monsters in their clan also takes the active player token and will take the first turn in gameplay. Then. Players place a number of monsters into the dungeon according to their clan card. The symbols on the left show which room or rooms they may be placed in, and the symbols on the right side of the banner show how many monsters to place. Clan cards also have a special ability, the total number of monsters in the clan, a wound threshold, and the number of clan tactic cards in their starting deck. Finally, select the difficulty level for the game, choosing between family, Challenging or Hardcore. Now the script here says we're gonna show you challenging, but you know we're doing hardcore. But come on. Take the difficulty tile, setting it with the wave one side face up, and set the guild deck on top. Gameplay occurs in turns, each divided into five phases. Play cards, refresh loot, cleanup and upkeep, Hero's Invasion, and End Your Turn. First up, in the Play Cards phase, the active player may play any number of cards from their hand, one at a time, resolving each fully before playing a new one. Cards have no cost to play, they're simply revealed from a hand into the play area face up. The abilities on cards may be resolved in any order, and players can use abilities on any of their monsters in the dungeon. Let's take a look at some of the action symbols in the game. Draw. This allows a player to draw an additional card from their tactic deck into their hand. This card is now usable on this turn. If a player's deck is ever empty and they need to draw, they just shuffle their personal discard pile into a new draw deck. Activate. This action allows the player to perform an ability or effect in the game which has the activate symbol. For example, every clan card has a special ability in the top right which requires an activation. Some dungeon rooms also require an activate action, such as the Forge, which allows a player to discard a coin and take an equipment card from the available loot. Acquired loot cards are immediately replaced from the loot deck. Move allows a player to move one of their monsters to an adjacent dungeon room via passageways or a portal. When moving, a monster is allowed to bring one resource or trap token with them. Attack. These come in two types, melee and ranged. Each type deals one damage to a hero, either in the same room if it's melee, or in an adjacent room if it's ranged. Note that you can't make a ranged attack through portals though, cause you just can't see anything through the swirling green vortex, you know? Defend. This is a reaction ability and can be played when a hero attacks a player's monster, lowering the damage dealt by one. Trap allows the player to place a trap token in a dungeon room containing one of their monsters. Traps only trigger when a hero enters a room, dealing one damage to them before it is discarded. 
Additional actions allow a player to place resources in the dungeon, open portals, summon additional monsters, and more. If two actions are separated by a slash, the player must choose between those two options. Some actions have a requirement followed by an arrow, meaning the player must fulfill the action on the left in order to use the one on the right. After a player has played as many tactic cards as they wish, their action phase ends and they may optionally refresh the loot. By discarding one tactic card, they may renew one to five loot cards, placing them under the loot deck and drawing new cards to replace them. This refresh can be performed multiple times in a turn, but always requires a tactic card to be discarded. Next, in the cleanup and upkeep phase, the player discards all cards in their play area to their discard and draws back up to a hand limit of five. Once again, if the tactic deck is empty, shuffle the discard to create a new deck. Now it's time for the hero's invasion phase, where the active player draws and resolves a number of cards from the top of the guild deck. Cards are resolved one at a time before drawing the next. The difficulty rating of your game determines how many cards are drawn. In our case, two guild cards, since we chose hardcore. Later in the game, when the guild deck is depleted, the guild discard is shuffled and made into a new guild draw deck. When this happens, the difficulty level tile is flipped to its wave two side, and now we will draw three cards when we return to this phase. Let's look at the guild cards. They come in two types, heroes and scenarios. Scenario cards are specific to the scenario's description and have their own rules in the dungeon book. Hero cards, which are much more common, summon heroes of the class shown, archer, warrior, rogue, or mage, into rooms matching the type listed. For example, this card summons two rogues into the sewers and the beast trainer. Heroes are summoned active side up. They have an exhausted version on the other side of their token. Immediately upon summoning, each hero also performs their special ability. Archers make a ranged attack. Warriors discard up to two resources from the room. Rogues discard one trap token before they're triggered from her summoning. And mages free imprisoned heroes. More on how they get imprisoned in a sec. Next, players check the room and trigger any traps from the newly summoned heroes. Then, if the hero was summoned into a room where other exhausted heroes are present, they are all flipped active and will resolve this turn along with the newly summoned hero. They resolve actions by doing one of the following in this order. Attack, plunder, wait, or charge. Attack. If a monster is present in the same room as the hero, exhaust the hero and deal one damage to the monster. Monsters can play a reaction defense card to mitigate this damage. If a monster dies by hitting its wound threshold, it's returned to the player's supply known as their lair. Otherwise, use a wound token to track damage on each monster. Plunder. If no monsters are present, check to see if the number of active heroes equals or exceeds the value of the treasure in the room. If so, exhaust a number of heroes equal to the treasure value and they plunder it. Flip the treasure token and resolve its effect. This is generally bad stuff, like discarding tactic cards, resolving additional guild cards, and in the case of the four point treasure, losing the game. Next up is wait. If there are no monsters in the room and there is treasure, but the number of active heroes doesn't hit the treasure value, the heroes will wait for reinforcements and exhaust. Charge. This occurs when there's no monsters or treasure in the room, and all active heroes move to an adjacent room closest to the vault. They're not exhausted, so players have to resolve their potential actions in the new room. After the requisite number of guild cards have been resolved, the active player ends their turn by passing the active player token to the player to the left, and the next player's turn begins. Gameplay continues with players summoning monsters, bonking heroes, and trying to keep ahead of all the adventurers plundering their treasure. If the players ever have their level four treasure plundered, they lose the game. However, if they can survive long enough to resolve the last card of the guild deck in the second wave, they win the game. Some other important aspects of keep the heroes out, dungeon rooms. 
Many rooms have a special action a player can perform if they have a monster inside them. Some generate resources, build traps, or even acquire certain loot cards. The cells are a special room. When a hero is summoned here, they are immediately exhausted and considered imprisoned. Mages summoned here are the only heroes that immediately reactivate all the imprisoned heroes. Additionally, once on their turn, players are allowed to push their luck by throwing a hero in the cells. They don't have to have a monster in the cells, and it doesn't cost an activate action. Instead, the player draws and reveals a guild card. If it's a scenario card, nothing happens. If it's a hero card, take one of those heroes from the supply and place them in the cells, exhausted and imprisoned. The player then gains a reward of three cards drawn from their tactic deck. Just be careful not to draw any mages, otherwise they'll activate all the other heroes in the cells. No heroes to summon? During the hero's invasion, if no more tokens of that hero class are available in the supply, then all exhausted heroes of that class and any other heroes in the same room, even the cells, are reactivated. Partners in Crime This variant for larger groups helps trim the downtime between turns. Players have smaller hands, just three cards, and take turns with a partner at the same time, but both get to play different factions. The Guildmaster's Revenge expansion includes awesome wooden meeples for the heroes, plus additional monsters, loot, upgrade cards, and new game modes including competitive and nightmare mode. And that's the basics of Keep the Heroes Out. I'm Becca Scott. This is Good Time Society, and you can be my partner in crime. All you have to do is join me on Gameplay, where me and my friends play this game. Watch to find out if we manage to hold on to our precious treasure, or if we succumb to the petulant plunderers. And remember to subscribe to the channel, come say hi on our Discord, and come on back for more great games and good times. Later, gamer.